Tell me some Megan and Shanita. Four words. The champs are here. The champ is here! Good morning, everyone. We are, my name is Edison, and I am joined here today with my lovely colleagues, Megan and Shanita, and we are Team PSC, Public Speaking Champions. And we would like to invite you this morning on a journey, a journey down the road of our Toastmasters journey. And I, what we're gonna talk about this morning are three Ps. So we hope you like pea soup, because there's going to be a lot of peas this morning. <laughs> and those three peas are our personal experience, our personal speech, and our personal critique. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's go, go ahead and go into, actually before I go into mine, I just would like to say that from week one, we started together as a team. And we've, we've gone through this journey together and we stand here today at the end of the road as a team. And I really, I really enjoyed working with these two ladies and it's just been, it's been great. So just wanted to throw that in real quick. And now I'm going to kind of just paint a, the background, the backdrop of how we started, where we went and all that. And we actually spoke at the Tacoma Public Utilities Building uh, just that right here down the street actually it's not too far from here and my point of contact was Bill Dickens who's the man uh, in the striped shirt on the right and I gotta tell you when I contacted him he was very very professional very as a matter of fact you know I need I need how long you speak in when you come in so I was a little intimidated initially but as as it went on and I actually went there the day prior just to kind of scout out the land and you know, make sure we didn't have any hiccups finding the place and, you know, knowing where the room was and all that good stuff. So, so a after that, once I met him and he was professional in business suit, I'm like, oh man, this is, this is kind of crazy. Um, what are we getting ourselves into basically? But it all worked out and we had a great time and we'll get into that as the speech progresses. But now I'm going to go into my three P's. And the first one, like I said, was my personal experience. And as a whole, what really jumped out at me this, with this experience was leadership and teamwork. Those were the two main things that really jumped out at me. And I actually took on the leadership role of our group. So I organized everything, prepared, the, the whole deal. And I have to say it was a bit intimidating because when you're working for yourself in your own grade, or you can procrastinate and do all that, you know, you can, you can procrastinate if you want because it's just your grade. But when you have your classmates that you're working with, well, their grade, you know, counts as well. So I didn't want to play at all. I wanted to make sure all my, my T's were crossed, my I's were dotted, and that I was just squared away. So. Um, as far as leadership was concerned, that is really what jumped out at me. And I actually, my, I interviewed a man called Alan Dobbins. He is the general manager for Insulation Northwest. And I spoke with him yesterday. And I, one of my questions was, was, what did he feel a good, successful leader, what, what's, a, what's a character trait that a good leader should possess? And he said a good leader in his book, should be a good follower. And that, that really, I mean, it just, I had a great time. I interviewed, I was like excited about the whole speech and everything. I mean, we, as a whole, we really had a, a, a awesome time. We actually almost got kicked out of the library because we were <laughs> so loud and we were just excited and making too much noise. But we were in a conference room, we didn't realize we were blasting the whole library out, but uh, we did have a good time. And, as far as the team building, so to tie in being a follower, I had to not only be the leader, but I had, I had to be a team member as well. 
and that that really that really was kind of the whole the culmination of everything was that I not only was leading but I was also a team member as well and I Mike McDonald wrote an article in PR uh, PR news and he said you have to be ready to learn yourself and that to me it was just kind of like because he said there was there was so many roads that lead to success but you have to be willing to just be open-minded and accept criticism accept feedback from your peers or your co-workers and so you have to be you have to be willing to do that so that was that was my personal experience in a nutshell so now we're gonna I'm gonna talk about my personal speech and we all did a collective speech like we're doing now and we did a speech on our individual programs and we kind of started out and took them on a journey kind of like I'm taking you on a journey right now but we did it a little differently I had everyone close their eyes and we had this Hawaiian music and I was telling them that we're going on a trip imagine yourself getting on the airplane and flying and the whole Hawaiian music was playing and everybody was kind of smiling, feeling all warm. And then I had pictures of Clover Park when I said, you're here. <laughs> so they were a little disappointed, but you know, I brought it back to reality quickly. <laughs> but the speech went well. We, I, I got up there, I did my piece, and we actually had a hiccup, which I'll get into as far as when I get into the critique. But as far as the speech as a whole, it went well and they enjoyed it. So now I'm going to get into my personal critique. Some good aspects of the speech, like I said, it went smoothly. The, the, the crowd was engaged. When the man got up there to critique us, he said that, that I had a good presence in the lectern. I had a, a, a commanding authority is what he, what he shared with me. Kind of got my head a little big. I had to <laughs> swell down a little bit. Um, but he did also give me the negative also and we had a PowerPoint presentation like this and we could not get the computer to hook up to the okay. to the projector mm -hmm. so we were I was freaking out you know because that was my responsibility and I mean we had the the whole Hawaiian music that we had to play so it was just a very important part of our speech so I was just scrambling, what am I gonna do? You know, I'm, and I couldn't find the file to play the actual, to play the, the, the presentation. I couldn't find the file, everything. And so the lectern was empty. They had present, they had you know, introduced us and we were supposed to be up there and I'm still on the computer and I'm just, I'm freaking out. So finally I find the file and I just set the laptop right in front of the lectern because we needed at least the music. So it was kind of crazy, but it all worked out. I was able to do it, but the negative thing was he said that I shouldn't be so tied to the presentation to where if something like that happens, you should just be able to roll with the punches and move on. And, and that was a, a valuable lesson to me. And actually, I, Alfred Chin, he wrote in a, a, a general, a, a engineering article, and he said that a, a basic term in, in uh, engineering is that you plan the work and you work the plan and that was the good aspect that I was doing but he went on in the article to say that you that a lot of companies fail to to have a contingency plan and and that was kind of where I was I I just got you know had the hiccup and didn't really know how to to recover but it ended up working out in the end so <clears throat> I've given you my three P's, and now I'm going to invite Shanita up to give her three P's. The chance of year. First, I will share with you my own personal experience, my personal speech, and my personal critique. My experience actually started at 4.30 in the morning. My group and I, we decided we were gonna meet at 6.15 at McDonald's. So me, having children, I had to get them ready, wipe the thrones out of their eyes, <laughs> brush the teeth, and head them on off to daycare. So when I made, them, made it to the daycare, by this time, it was about six o'clock. So I jump on the expressway, I'm right. Mine is here, I'm coming from the east to here, east side over here. So I'm on the expressway, I'm rolling. 
So I'm driving and all that on the expressway. I'm like, oh my God, don't be late. Hold on. Okay, okay. So by this time, Megan texts me. Shanita, where are you? I said, I'm on my way around the corner. She's like, so I'm coming on around the corner. Now mind this here. My group and I would decide we were gonna meet at the McDonald's. No, I didn't get a Big Mac or a cup of coffee. <laughs> but we met at McDonald's. This was our place where we were all gonna come together and meet one another. So we decided we were gonna beat each other at 6.15. So by this time, it's like 6.10, you know, I'm good, okay. I got around the corner, I'm on Portland, I turned on South to come away. Now mine is here, we were supposed to meet at the McDonald's on Portland Avenue, not the McDonald's on South Tacoma Way. Oh, oh, no. So I went on Portland and turned on Southway. <laughs> so got there, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> they not even here. Why are they texting me? <laughs> you know, like she's sitting in the parking lot. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm good. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Next thing I know, Edison called me on my cell phone. And he's like, Shania, where are you? Uh, where are you? <laughs> I'm here. I'm sitting in the parking lot. And he was like, where are you? What McDonald's are you at? And I'm like, I'm at the one on South Tacoma Way. And he said, no, in Portland. So I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm in the wrong spot. So he just said, like, stay where you are. Oh, boy. <laughs> you, know, like you know, I was like, okay. I'm praying, Lord, please let me, let us make it on time because I don't want to be late. You know, these guys, you know, Toastmasters look supposed to be there on time. You know, I got a team that I'm a part of. You know, I don't, I didn't want to be the, the, the cause of us being late. So I kid you not, Edison made it there in like five minutes. And when he pulled up, he was like, let's roll. So I was like, okay. So you know, I got behind him, we driving down the street. So we get there to uh, Tacoma Power, where the Toastmaster Club is meeting. And when we made it there, um, he mainly, when we got there, it was like the little security building. And the lady was, you know, sitting in there and it was a gate. And I'm talking about a raw iron gate. And two cops was coming in, so the cops stopped at the, the security uh, desk and went on in. So I'm like, oh my God, you know, where are we, you know? So I'm all timid and scared, so we walk on in. And so um, when we made it there, we actually arrived early. Now, this is what I learned. A.O. Kirkpatrick, <clears throat> in the Complete Speakers of Toastmasters book, he stated that if you are nervous or a little apprehensive, arrive at your place that you're going to speak early. Mm -hmm. Because it gives you a chance to get a feel of your room and you become more, you know, you become more a part of your room, of your element of where you're getting ready to speak. So going on into my, continuing my experience. So I get there and we go on in and everything and so we're just in the room or whatever. And so it was, you know, okay, we were good. We were like, okay, we're early, wonderful. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna share with you my personal speech. My speech was actually on human services. So I got up, I started to tell them about uh, the program here at Cobra Park, how long the program is, and actually uh, what are the requirements to be a service worker. And so while I was up there, at first I had my notes, I was ready to go, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, um, um, um. And immediately, I just forget it, threw it out, I went with a story. And this is another thing that I learned in building better business. Phil Donsbier said, avoiding a bad decision is more valuable than, uh, than a good decision. And right then, I knew that with me trying to remember what I wrote and what I was Planning to tell Toastmasters wasn't working. So I threw it out and I decided to go with a story. Went with a story and immediately the crowd became a part, you know, they was laughing at what I had to share, you know, and so it became exciting and all of that being afraid or being fearful went completely out the door. Next, I will talk to you about my personal critique. Mr. Kyle, this is a gentleman with his hand folded with the glasses. This was the guy that critiqued us. And when he got up and was getting ready to critique me, this is what he said. He said, you know, Shanita, I saw when you got up there, you was trying to do the notes. He said, but immediately you saw it wasn't working and you threw it out. You started with a story. And so he said, when you did that, it opened me up. 
He said, that's when I was able to listen to what you had to say. He said, when you're just feeding me a lot of data and information, he said, I'm really not listening. He said, but when you start to talk about your own personal stories, he said, then that's when I'm open to hear what you had to say. And he said, I thought that that was a good thing that you did when you threw the notes out the door and went on with a story. He said, it was really good. So that was the critique that he gave me. One thing that I learned about service workers is that within the next decade, it's going to actually be a 16% rise. So that's one thing I learned in the Bureau of Labor uh, Outlook book for service workers. So I've shared with you my three Ps. Hope you enjoyed the soup. And now I'm going to introduce you to my, to Megan. <laughs> <coughs> I hope you guys aren't too full of these P's because I have three more for you. <laughs> My personal experience with Toastmasters was amazing. I couldn't, it was mainly amazing because I had such a great group. I am so thankful and blessed to have been in a group with these two people. They're the most, they're, they're hardworking and the most kindest people I have ever met. Um, we all bring something different to the table, which is why we have such great team chemistry. For instance, Edison, like you said, was our team leader, right? From day one when we first met and got together, he said, I'm going to do everything and anything I can for this group to be successful. And Shani and I kind of looked at each other and we nodded our heads and we were like, you know what? Yeah, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this and we're gonna, you know, do it really good. And <laughs> as you can tell, we love each other and you know, we work really hard. and. We're good at what we do. Mm -hmm. And then we have Shanita, who is the creative mind behind everything. She's the one who always has fun, new ideas. For instance, the music that you heard, that um. was from her. <laughs> 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 and then, from me, I bring uh, team morale. Mm -hmm. I'm always positive, have a positive attitude. I'm always excited. I'm always happy to be here and with them. And but I also bring the rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. I'm always asking, do you have your three citations? <laughs> do you have your portfolio good and ready to go? Mm -hmm. Do you need any help with this? Do you need any help with that? So that's why we're such a great team because we bring just different things together and we just work really, really well together. From day one, or within the two weeks, Edison found us a site to do our speech for Toastmasters, which, you know, was we're really spoiled because he's on top of things. Yes. So I don't know what it was like to not have, you know, t a Toastmasters site. I don't know what that's, that stress is like, so I'm really thankful for that. Anyway, uh, we did our Toastmasters speech at the Tacoma Public Utility Center. And we get there, and it's a, it's just a, it's still dark outside because it's so early, and it's cold, and it's rainy, and it's the mood is so gloomy, which doesn't help how depressed I am right now because I am so <laughs> nervous. Anyways, we get into the building, we find our room, and for some reason there's something about a dark room with the door shut. You automatically think the door is locked. Right. We literally stand outside the door for two to three minutes, and then Edison finally, you know, grabs the handle and goes right in. And so we, la we had a good laugh about that, and that kind of let off some, you know, stress and anxiety. And, but then when we get in, there's this huge conference table. There's, you know, plasma TVs on the walls and those cool, fancy, you know, rolly chairs. And that just brought in more stress and like, great. And then we sit down and Edison's trying to get things together and we're just sitting really quiet. And then some of the Toastmaster members start filtering in. They're saying, hello, welcome, how you doing? So that kind of lets some stress off. And for some reason, I had the idea that these Toastmaster members were going to be superior than me. They were going to be better than me, and which is why I was so nervous. And it's a funny thing about preconceived notions that we think, you know, we know something when we really don't. Jeffrey w Winters from Why We Fear the Unknown, he states that we are quick to judge, we're quick to judge, we're scared, 
and we even hate the unknown, which is really funny because we all think we can, you know, we have a magic ball and we can tell the future and we know that things are just going to be so terrible. <laughs> But in actuality, you know, we got there, we got through it, and it was actually really easy. It was very easy. So that, that's just funny about, you know, people thinking they know how things are going to be when they have actually no idea. Also, I did an interview with Scott Anderson, a car salesman, and he told me, or I asked him, how do you get rid of some of those nerves? How, do you, how are you so comfortable in front of people when you're talking to them and trying to sell them a car. And he said, just relax, joke around, smile. He's, he was actually a really funny guy. And I learned from him and tried to incorporate that in my speech. As you can tell, I'm smiling a lot more and kind of <laughs> laughing. <laughs> so that's an improvement. <laughs> my next point, or my next P, is my personal speech that I gave at Toastmasters. I told them about my specific program at Clover Park, which is my dental, assist, dental assisting, and I've already finished it. I told them some of the requirements, prerequisites, tests, and some stories about you know, my program and experience. And then I told them my future goals and plans, and how I plan to become a dental hygienist. And I found that Hannah Jeslin from Careers to Smile About stated that Hygienists are projected to be the, the 20 fastest growing occupations in America, so that kind of encouraged me and let me know that I am getting into the right career path. So that just reassured me. My next P is my personal critique that I was given. The whole time when I was uh, giving my speech, I stood behind the podium I actually had my feet together like this, and my arms behind my back. And if you guys don't know this, this is called the reverse fig leaf. <laughs> Keith, uh, Keith told me this, and I, I looked at Shanita and Edison, and I'm like, do you guys know what that is? I don't know what that is. And toast, the Toastmasters members kind of giggled. And so I kind of tried to imagine like a leaf. I literally looked like a leaf that was folded. And this stance really isn't good for public speaking because it makes you look like you're closed to the audience and you're it's just really hard for them to receive what you're saying because you're not kind of interacting but when you're like moving around moving your arms you know the audience pays attention and are more receptive to what you're saying and you know it, your speech is memorable you're not just boring so I took this as constructive criticism, and as you can see, I've learned from this, and I'm not standing like this. And I'm looking up, and I'm talking, just like normal. And I find this, he said, while I was reading straight from my notes, but then when I would look up and tell a story, then I would loosen up and start walking around and, and talk. So I just, I, I learned that moving around and not being so stiff helps me as a speaker and you as an audience, actually. I learned from Julie May from How to Give It and How to Take It. She states that criticism can actually be a positive experience, whether giving it or receiving it. And Dr. Phil is a good example of this. For instance, after we're done speaking, we'll sit down. Dr. Phil will ask, what did the speakers do well and what do they need to improve on? And he really makes it a comfortable environment for the speaker to receive the criticism and for the audience to give it. So, you've heard my three Ps. And in conclusion, you all have heard why we're such a great group, how we've grown individually, and how we've grown as a group. You've learned that our experience with Toastmasters has made us better public speakers. In the beginning, you all can understand how intimidated <coughs> and scared we were, as you were. But in the end and afterwards, we real realized how easy and revital, like, it was just easy. And after everything was said and done, we walked out of there. I know we felt like we could conquer the world. <laughs> I'm telling you, we were so pumped. <laughs> I don't know about you guys after finishing those speeches, but 
I felt amazing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we are champions. Mm -hmm. A champion is someone who defeats or surpasses something. For instance, we won Best Speaker Award at Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, we, we found in ourselves that there is a public speaker. It just takes time, hard work, and effort. And Toastmasters kind of helped open that door for us, for us to help realize that we can do anything and we, if you set your mind to it, we can surpass anything. And we're capable of much more than we think we are. So we are champions. <laughs>